learning a beginner version of Rocky Top for bluegrass banjo. This song was originally written in 1967 and recorded that same year. Uh, the Osborne Brothers were the first ones to record it. Um, it later became the fight song for the UT Volunteers. Um, and given that uh, the football season is starting tomorrow for them, I figured it would be appropriate um, to give all the ball fans out there um, this lesson. It's about time. Uh, so here we go. <coughs> As always, you'll need a five-string banjo, some finger picks. Now, someone mentioned in a comment uh, a while back that they didn't know you had to use picks. Well, you don't, but things sound different without them. That's with picks, and here's without. It's uh, just quite a bit weaker sounding, and uh, you don't really get that classic bluegrass sound without the finger picks. So that was just a little side note there. Okay, um, as always, it's going to be tuned G, D, G, B, D. And um, that's just open G standard tuning for a banjo. Before we go any further, it might be worth taking a look at the uh, chord structure of the song. Now for Rocky Top, uh, the verse, it's going to be G, C, G, E minor, D, G. Now, if you don't have, know how to play these chords, it might be worth um, heading over to my Ultimate Banjo Chord Lesson. Um, I can put a link to it right here. Um, now, we're not necessarily going to be using the full shapes all the time, but we will be using um, full D chord shape, E minor shape, stuff like that. But I will show it to you in this lesson as well. Um, I just, whenever I'm picking up a new instrument, I like to learn the chord shapes. But anyway, um, so. Yes, for the verse it's going to be G, C, G, E minor, D, G, and we're going to repeat it. The chord structure for the chorus is E minor, D, F, C, and then C, G, and then G, D, G, and then E minor. Uh, three chords there. Lots of people do those in different ways. Some people will throw an F chord in that last uh, bit there, but uh, for the beginner banjo version, I figured let's uh, stick to some chords we know and only have to tackle that F one. So we're going to be using a really simple fingering for it when we get there. Um, okay, let's dive in here. Here's how the beginning is going to sound like. two parts of the verse. Now the second part is just repeating that uh, basically exactly. So um, the things that we're going to learn here are going to build off each other a lot. It actually won't take all that long. First let's take a look at the kickoff. Here's how I did it in the recording. I'm pinching the high G, the B, and the D. So three pinches, open, B string first fret, B string second fret. Now the other way that you can do it, um, and I sometimes uh, do it interchangeably between that way and this way, is to go hit the high D, then I hit the B open, then I do that same little walk up there. And what we're doing there is we're getting ready to go into that. Um, um, now that's where it goes in fighting and breakdown. For, for Rocky Top it's going to be very similar, it's going to sound like this. kickoff, we're going to do a hammer-on from the 2nd to the 3rd fret on the B string. That's what that looks like with your pointer finger. Down here you're picking it with your pointer finger. Then you hit the high D, then you do a forward roll, and you hit the high G again. And then that brings us to the foggy mount roll, which is going to look like this. Now it's a little bit complicated, um, so let's take a closer look. We're going to start with our pointer finger on the B string, hammer on, then hit the high D, and now we're going to bring our thumb all the way up here from the high G string where it lives to the B string down there. So, and then we hit the high D again. So we got with our pointer finger, hammer on, 
middle finger high D, with our thumb hammer on, middle finger high D. Then we're going to do one forward roll on the high G, the B, and the D. And then hit the high G again. So all together that looks like this. Okay, so let's add that into what we've got so far. Now we're going to go to a C shape. Now we don't have to do the whole C shape, which is that. All we've got to worry about is these two strings down here, the B and the D string, the high D. So we're going to fret the B at the first fret with our pointer and the D at the second fret with our middle finger. And we're going to do a backward roll on the high D, the B, and the G. Then we're going to hit the high D string, then the high G. Then we're going to do another backward roll. So here's what that looks like added into everything we got so far. same three strings. But this time we're going to do a pull off from the third fret on the G string to the second fret. So then we're going to hit the high D, then we're going to hit the G string open with our thumb. So and pull offs from the uh, third fret and the second fret on the G string are extremely common in bluegrass. We're going to get into a more complicated one later on where we're going to like that. Um, so that's well, not too bad, but anyway. So that's just a backward roll with a pull off, then hit the high D with your middle finger, then hit the G string open. And let's do what we got so far. So after that pull off and the high D string and then hitting the G string open, you're going to pinch. Then you're going to go to your E minor shape. So that's the first quarter of one verse. Um, now the, the second quarter here that takes us up to the halfway mark is significantly easier than what we just did. You've got most of the hard part done. Just like in Foggy Mountain right now, we've got this here forward backward roll that we're going to do now. Now this is easy, easy, easy. We're going to go to an E minor shape, which is low D string at the 2nd fret, high D at the 2nd fret. That's an E minor. Um, so now we're going to hit the low D with our thumb, the B with our pointer finger, the high D with our middle, the high G with our thumb, and then back down. So we're doing the, the high D with our middle finger, the B with our pointer, and the low D with our thumb. Here's, here's that really slow. Let's add that into what we got so far. So I added the, the high D note there at the end. So after you do, you're going to hit that high D with your middle finger. And let's let's start from the beginning again. Now we're gonna do a G leg. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the G leg, um, there's plenty of people who teach it really well on YouTube. Um, I'll just go over it really quickly here, um, so that you've all got it down. Um, it's, it's a little bit tricky because you've got to do some uh, funky hitting of the G string with both your thumb and your pointer finger. So you're going to start with your thumb on the low G. Then you're going to hit the high D with your middle finger. Then you're going to hit the high G with your thumb. So what we've got so far is now we're going to hit the low G fretted second fret with your pointer finger and you're going to slide to the 3rd fret. Then you're going to hit the high D with your middle finger. Then you're going to hit the low G open.
with your pointer finger. Then you're going to hit the low D fret of the second fret. Then the high D with your middle finger, and then the low G with your thumb. And that is the G lick, the quintessential lick in all of bluegrass banjo. Like half of bluegrass songs, you could just do that the whole time and everybody would think you were awesome. There's also variations on it. Now we're going to do a G lick. And another G lick. So here's what those two G licks sound like back to back. Um, so let's start from the beginning and we're going to, now this is, this is halfway point for the verse, so let's hear what that sounds like. is going to be a direct carbon copy of the first half. Um, so we do the kickoff, we have the C shape, we have our pull off, we have our E minor part, and we've got our G licks. Now I will mention um, that during that first G lick that's actually the D part of the song. So um, I've got the two G licks in there for simplicity's sake. However, if you wanted, instead of doing that first G lick to go uh, to your D shape, which is pointer finger, the low G string, second fret, middle finger, third fret, B string, and uh, pinky finger, fourth fret on high D. You can do a forward backward roll on those three strings that you're fretting, and the high G. Then hit the high D, and then go back into the G leg. And uh, then your, your verse would sound like this. fine, it's just a, just a tiny bit more complex. So, so here's what we got so far. Now we're going to go to, oh sorry, I forgot a little lick there. Hit the low G, then pinch the outside strings, hit the low G again, then pinch the outside strings again. So the chorus is going to feature lots and lots of forward backward rolls. And here's what that means. It means first you're going to do a forward roll. So you're rolling forward. So let's say you're doing G, B, D. That's a forward roll. Then you're going to hit the high G string and roll backwards. So high D, B, G. Now what matters here is not the strings that you're hitting, but the direction that you're hitting them in. So you could also do a forward backward roll on the low D, B, high D, G, high D, B, low D. That would also be one. So this is a forward backward roll. And this is also a forward backward roll. And, um, let's see, what else weird can I do? This is a forward backward roll. Um, so uh, that's going to involve a whole lot of those. Now, oftentimes what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing two forward backward rolls. And we're going to, after that, we're going to have to include four notes so that we can uh, get ready with the, with the rest of the band to move to the next chord. So, at the end of that, I'm going to hit basically the, the two boundary strings that are not the high G string that I was rolling on. So the strings that were the direction. Take the two outside strings there and hit the low one, then the high one, then the low one, then the high one. So... It's uh, C, if you were doing one on C. If you're doing one on uh, D, for instance, it would be this. So that's a, a D chord. Since you're using these three strings, you would uh, ignore the high G, then pick the two outside strings that you had been directioning on, and hit them um, the low one and the high one and the low one. So, um, 
if you know that, then then the chords is going to be real easy because it's a lot of that. So we go E minor, D, then we're going to have some forward rolls for the F chord. It's a four finger chord. But we don't have to use all four fingers. We're just going to use two of them. We're going to fret the B string at the first fret with our pointer. We're going to fret the high D string at the third fret with our pinky finger or ring finger, whichever one you want. And we're going to do some forward rolls. But we're still going to do those. But this time we're going to do it with the high G and the D. Then the C. So here's what we are going to have. Here's what it's going to sound like. So that's just four pinches. Super easy. High G, B, and D. Then we're going to go into the forward rolls. And we're doing the same thing here that we were doing on the F chord. One, two, three. the forward rolls you can use the high G as an outside string. Let's talk about that a little bit. Um, so basically you start with the low G string and you slide up to the fourth fret. Then you're going to do a forward roll. So that's a, that's a forward roll there because you're hitting the low G string, then the B string, then the, then the high D. Then the, you're going to hit the high G string and you do another forward roll. So that's a forward roll with the high G, the B, and the high D. Then you're going to hit the G string fret at the third fret and pull off to the second. Then hit the high D string with your middle finger. Then hit the low G open. Now we've got the very ending of the chorus. And here's how that goes. It's going to go G, D, G, E minor, D, G. So. That's what it's going to sound like if you're in the middle of the song. Here's what it's going to sound like if you're ending the song. So that involves some different chord shapes, just to get us up the neck for the ending. So um, let's look at the, the first one first. So it was uh, just, uh, that's high G, low G, high D, high G, low G, high D, and then high G, high D. So two forward rolls, then high G. ID. Then we're going to do an inside outside roll, uh, sorry, a forward back of roll on, on the D chord. And then low G, high D at the end, C. Then a G light. Now, if you're in the middle of the song, then we do a forward back of roll on the E minor chord with our low D, high D at the end. Then a forward back of roll on the D chord with our low G, high D at the end, and then a G leg. But if you're ending the song, then you're going to go up to five, seven, nine. You're going to go to yeah, you're going to go to the ninth fret with your middle finger on the low G string, the eighth fret with your pointer finger on the B string. Then the ninth fret with your ring finger on the high D string, and you're going to do a forward backward roll here with your low G, high D at the end. So then just go back and bar at the seventh fret. That's D chord there, and do the exact same picking pattern we just did for the E minor chord. And then you're going to go up to the 12th fret and bar and just do two forward rolls and then one forward roll up here with your pointer finger at 
15th fret on the B string and your uh, ring finger on the 17th fret of the B string and do one forward roll on the high G, B, and high D. Again that was. And that's just a really good way to end the song. Uh, that note right there is very popular for writing songs on the bluegrass banjo. Um, so let's take a look at the whole thing put together and we'll do it slowly.